It is indeed totally awesome fishing time again. Now listen, I'm not an early bird at all really. I do all night sessions in the summer when it's nice, but I'm not really a get up five o'clock in the morning guy, get out there and be fishing by seven. I do a lot of my fishing and more important, a lot of my catching towards, I could say, mid afternoon until early evening. Now it can be winter or summer. It's that sort of time that I've got confidence to fish with. And what it's called is, an American term I believe it is called, be there when they bite. So I don't often do all day long sessions. I try and pick the time when I think the fish are going to be feeding. And very often it might be a struggle to start with, but just hang around. Stuff happens late afternoon. Well, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This is going to be the latest, really, I've cut it fine today. I just want to catch some fish if I can, or a fish, a fish. You know when you just want to go fishing? I've been doing jobs, jobs, jobs. I've been working on one of Mike's bushcraft camps, sawing, tying, everything, digging. And it just got carried away for one of his uh, big bushcraft films that he's doing on TA Outdoors. It just got carried away, and my fishing day suddenly turned into a TA Outdoors, three quarters day. So I've come to Vale Farm. And I'm sort of in a quandary. Well, I'm not now, but I was walking through the tackle shop part of my garage and thinking, do I take river tip rods? Do I use pellet and feeder at distance? What do I do for method? And I thought, I haven't got time to feed a swim up. How would I expect to catch at short notice? Well, it's late in the season for floater fishing, but you never know. And I've done so well on bread this year for all manner of species. I thought, I'll give it a go. So this is the rig I've got. It's not exactly rocket science. In fact, it's a mess. I've got, can I know you, the old tackle tarts love it. It is, wait for this, it's really uh, not, not quiver tip stuff. It is a Nomura Icy, I-S-E-I, 2.1 meters, professional. Wow, I'm impressed with that. Casting weight, 10 to 35 grams. Grams, casting weight, you're asking yourself. I've got my trusty uh, aero type reel with five pounds, six pound line, whatever it is. But the benefit is, guys, it's a one-piece rod now. It was a two-piece, and have you ever had this? You shut the boot of the car, or you close the door, or you pile a load of other tackle on top of other rods and reels, and they break. This one is broken. I've grabbed one broken rod that I've tried to glue together. I've no idea where they hold up. I've whipped it just in the middle there. Just whipped it together, glued it, and whipped it as best I could, ramming the spigot there, right up inside the glass, and whipped over the top. That's all I thought, I'm gonna go with one rod see what I can do. I've scattered some bread about. There's only about three or four people here. There's a huge storm coming in tomorrow. <sighs> but you know what? I've got to get a bait in the water. I've got to try and catch something. So here I am on one of the lakes. I've scattered some crust in there, but it's not the summer, is it, boys? It's not the summer. I'm not going to give it very long before I move and put some bread, sinking bread. I've got two loaves, sliced toasted bread. Nothing, I've got two swims, I'm walking around, I want to be mobile and I'm looking for any form of movement. I don't want to be in one swim unless I'm seeing fish. I figure it's the only way I've got a salvaging something out of about two, two and a quarter hours I've got. But man, it looks quiet at the moment. So this is what I've made up, put that there. I've mushed up a load of bread like that, but you can see that is actually sloppy bread, it's going to sink. My crusts, like down here, which I've scattered along, all the way along here, I've seen hardly anything take. So guys fishing down the ends, they're probably on the old method feeder, which is like, well, it's fine, but can be a bit boring at times. Um, does produce though, but I don't want to do that. I just want to go with this single rod. Wind is coming from this way. I want to move over that side, maybe. Maybe I'll put some bread out here. There's not too many ducks. Anyway. We need to see some form of movement. Just out there, but they're not coming up with any continuity. And don't forget, guys, this time of year, it's getting colder, the fish are going down. I know if I really wanted to catch fish, I would come here all day and probably be loose feeding maggots, um, small baits like that. But at the moment, I'm just trying to see if I can't get one because I can also see all well, that cast over there, guys. The reason being, it came off the beep hook. There's small fish top in there and I should think if I had maggots and a waggler float I could probably get some roach and skimmers going here. At the moment no sign of a carp. 
I see nothing. To, oh, my gut feeling is going bait up in the margins over there. That's that's my gut feeling. Oh, I just see a splash around the corner. I think we'll take a piece of bread round there. Just have a look. Leave the rod there. Oh, I'm using just regular white bread, that toasty stuff I like using. Normally under here would be, you'd think, I've never fished it before, but normally there'd be fish under there. Apparently not today. It could be this huge low pressure coming in, it's putting fish off. Down here, you see these bits of my bread have come around there. There's nothing taking it, it's bizarre. Sometimes, you get the wind coming this way, right, and there's this bush, it just kills it off enough that down in here, any food that does come, instead of racing right down the bottom of the lake, you can just circulate and come in underneath this willow and underneath the front of the bush here. So I sort of quite fancy this area. That's why I'm not uh, sort of setting up too much yet. I'm just scattering the odd slice of bread around and just trying to look for fishy movement. Oh, look what he's got. He's got a mouse. Look at it in his mouth. Can you guys? Here, pussy. Wish I hadn't said that. Listen. Wow, hang on a minute. I put a load of bread in there. Where's that gone? Is it all drifted down there? I think I'll give him a good whack there. Maybe just sit and wait for a minute. Maybe the birds have eaten it. I've, I've walked down there, come back, and probably the birds have. But from here, I can actually see a bit out there. All right, windy weather. I'm going to cut a piece of crust up like this. Let's do this down here. Hopefully you can see. I'm going to cut my crust into, you think, the proverbial squares. Ordinarily, I'd be using one piece of crust, let's say like that. But I'm going to cut smaller and smaller pieces. Just cut the edge off of these, like this. Just cut the corners off. And this is what I call my pyramid crust for casting longer distances. Yeah. Show you what I mean. Okay. I want the biggest weight at the bottom, so I put the smallest piece of crust on first. Hopefully, you see this, thread it up the hook. Then the next piece. Right up the line, then the next piece, a little bit bigger each time, and then this piece I leave, not the brown side down, the white side down. So I go in that way. I turn it over, push the hook in, and then slide these other ones down on top. And that one, tell I've been working, look at the state of those nails, look at those nails boy. Been working with my digging holes, putting stakes in the ground and that. And that's what I call that one there is my pyramid crust, which I can cast quite a long way. You watch, I'll cast this a long way and the fish will come up close. Well, I just want to do this to show you and give you an idea how far it will go. This is, don't forget, with a, a sort of drop shot rod. I've dunked it once to give it a bit of weight. One bit came off. And the rest goes way down there. As you can see my bread is in here, but I'm, I've got my crust way down the back there. Check the drag. Right, people, I've just heard a little bit of slurping going on around the corner under that tree, so I'm going to take a bit of crust with me. Just nip them up into these sort of sections. There's nothing further out where I put that pyramid crust. And I have the feeling they won't be big carp when it's when it's cooler like this, on the surface, take a bread. Nothing down there, you can see just down here maybe. There's a fish coming up, but I heard slurping in here, right under these trees. And it would be a sort of classic place for a carp to be. So, chuck a few bits out there, see what comes up. You probably, you might be able to see him, might not, I don't know. How on how earth am I going to get to my bait in there? I don't know. I think I'll get a bit more bread in there because if you sometimes get their confidence going. Once, what I've noticed as well is that slurping noise they make and the splashing and stuff like that in the summer. I'm sure that the other carp hear that and know it's the dinner bell ringing.
And of course, right down by that tree root, that bread's drifting right in close there. There's no reason why they couldn't uh, come in there as well. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's what they want. I got it. This is going to be some explosive take. I think they know I'm here. I think they know I'm They're going to have to creep in there. This is point blank, guys, point blank. Point blank. I've got them, I've got them feeding now. Watch that piece of bread. It's pointed right at my tip. Right off the rod. I'll try and get it as close as I can. I can hear them, and as usual, my piece is the one piece that's not being taken. That piece will. I'm pretty sure that piece is going to go. I'm trying to point right down there for you. With all this undergrowth, I've no idea I'm going to strike. I couldn't fish this with an Avon rod for sure. I'm going to try, try and creep right round and keep low. I can't even get the rod in there. There's no space. They're just down under that hanging piece. But they've got to come around and circulate and find my... There's a swirl to the left, because the bread's drifting that way. Oh, man. Oh, my God, is it going to save the blank? Is it going to... Is he going to save the blanks? Is he going to go straight in the trees? God. And of course I've got my broken rod here to contend with. It's not a big fish, it's not a big fish. I will take anything if I can get a fish out before this storm comes. Come on, man, turn around. I'll tell you what, the rod's okay, the rod's not snapped yet. Try and find the net, Graham. Oh, he's digging. He is digging down deep. It's not a big fish, but that's just what I wanted to come for, was any fish. And I've got 20 to 4, quarter to 4. Oh, I've got to play him right out with this short rod. If I overpower it, I might break the uh, joint. I've got the joint up here. There he is. Got him. Oh, sweet. Saved the blank. There's the hook pops out. Well, well, well. Now, of course, I could have tried those on the feeder, couldn't I? I could have tried them with a the feeder. But I just figure I just didn't have time, and that took about 20 minutes to get those fish going. I'm going to put it against one of the famous chairs there. Great. Got a fish. Can I possibly get another one? Well, obviously that's panicked them a little bit under that tree. I've thrown some more bread in. I've come away. Just give them two or three, four minutes, and I feel another one might come back. You can see out here in the open, out here where I threw the bread, small fish taken, I mean the probably half pounders. Down there, nothing, obviously, in the open, but I can hear them taken in there. So let them build up a little bit of confidence and then creep in there again, see if we can't pick another one off. Keep down there. Look at my shadow there, people. This is why I say keep low. Now they can't see my silhouette at the moment because my silhouette is way down here and I'm fishing up there. But if I was standing up there against that sun going around like that, they can definitely, definitely see my outline. And if I'm moving, probably if you're dead still, you're okay. But I've said this before, when there's a gap like that and the fish live here and they live around this tree, they can see there's... An oh, it's just about a strike. Guy Smith again, he's done it, he's done it, he's maybe missed another one. They can see, they get used to nothing being in that gap. And if they suddenly see something in that gap, they're liable to realise it's a human or some form of predator. Yeah, I'm drifting right in there. Let's get that right over there. Oh, I'm on. I'm on, boys. That's that sunken crust just below the surface. I'll tell you what, some poke in this little, this little rod. It's only a casting rod, but... Right under the tree there. Oh, he's stripping, stripping me out, stripping me out. Gotta watch the tree roots here. What a classic carpy looking swim. Come on. A nice tippy rod is a casting rod, really. But I thought, you know what, rather than bait up the quiver tip rods, I'm gonna, gonna, oh no, don't go around there. I'm just going to keep moving, keep moving, and see if I can get lucky with a good old-fashioned bread again. It was a little, little bit bigger, probably the same size. 
probably the same fish. Oh, don't go in those roots, don't go in those roots. There he goes in the roots. Watch that ground down there. This rod doesn't go. I hope the rod doesn't go. He's fighting harder now than he was before. Whichever way the fish goes, pull the opposite direction. I was taught that by a bone fishing expert. Man alive, this one is going and going. And turn over and oh, it's bigger fish. Bigger fish, that's why. Much bigger fish. Oh, he's going for the Go for the roots. Am I going to go for a swim? Am I going to go for a swim? Oh yeah, that's a better carp. He's done. Let's get him up this way. Oh. Come on, come out of those bushes, you naughty, naughty boy. Oh, he's got a renewed, renewed sense of life. I think I've got him, I think I've got him. He's in. He's swung the wrong way. Much bigger fish. Let's get it up on the mat. <laughs> Who'd have thought so on this little lightweight spinning rod? Fish about. Don't know what he's looking about at six. Just a quick look guys. Nice common. A bit of action. I can get back to the wife's job later on. <gasps> Later on this afternoon, I know at least I've got some fish before the storms hit and before the wife's on my case about doing her DIY jobs. That's a good fish. Pleased with that one. I'm just going to move slowly along, listening and looking, but I am going to go around that side because if those are under there, I'm sure there's carp under all these. But just check that one. So even from here with floater fishing, I can see if a fish had moved on any of my crust over there. Probably gone with the birds. Who knows, you know, with the more. Well, there is a ripple way down under there. It is a ripple. That's worth a look at if I do move. Under the other willow tree. That wasn't a bird. I think that was a fish. So I can move between two or three different swims. Got my rod with me. Ah, oh, there's a ripple. There's a ripple, guys. Can you see that? I can't believe I'm going to get three fish out of the same swim, but there he is again. Oh, that looked like a better fish. Crust is down. Oh, he's to the left of my crust. There he is, just over there. Just over there. It looked like a, what I call a decent swirl. I feel like I want to be a little bit farther out, but the wind's... Oh, there he goes. The wind's pushing it and pushing it closer in. So I have to slowly... Oh, three inches from it. Oh, he knocked it. They're not stupid stupid, are they? Not as stupid as me for agreeing to do the wife's DIY jobs. I'll try a little bit further over under the tree. There we try that. That's where they seem to be more confident, just on the outside edge there. Get that camera out. Oh. <laughs> you saw it live on YouTube, the totally awesome fishing under the willow tree swim. Small one, I'm gonna go for that straight away. If he comes up, I'm gonna get him. I've got him. Now that is, I think you'll agree, quite a pretty little cart with that lovely orange in it. Let's get it back. I'm definitely going around the other side now. I'm going to go over that side and take a gamble with the sloppy bread. Well, look at this, guys. Look. Look, I mean, yeah, I've got to put this down because this sort of annoys me. If you're a fisherman, why would you leave what's equivalent about a £20 line just hanging up, up a tree? Look at it. Well, where was he casting, for God's sake? What was he thinking of? There's a whole rig here. Am I going to come out of this with a hook? Ah. Yeah, there's a rig and a hook. If I can get it back, why couldn't the angler get it back? You just leave it there. Litter. Litter bothers me. Oh, getting a hook in my finger is going to bother me in a minute, Graham. There's a whole rig there. Just Some anglers is beyond belief. Leave the litter, and then they wonder why their fishery closes or bans anglers. Well, they never learn, some people, unfortunately. Now, up here is an overhanging bush, which I don't recall being there before. And I feel 
that it could be a fish on either side of that. Hmm. Maybe it was there. Now, I used to fish down the margin in here, really close. You've probably seen some of the films float fishing. Let's switch off while I get one. I'll put some of this slop in. It's got to go. Look at this line. I mean, this is just annoying me. Just really annoying me. I don't know. It's about 80 pounds. What's he going to catch? A tiny small hook. Guys, what just watch some of our videos? You don't need you don't need this sea fishing gear, look. There's too many carp articles written I feel about using heavy gear. If you get a letter, even if it's not yours, take it home. Let's put it in the litter bag. Now, I was Xander fishing recently, look. This shows you. Well I'm advertising, it's a free advert for them. Why would you use that and not take it home? That was a totally different fishery, two lots of litter. All I've come out with is a swivel. Take the litter home. You brought it, take it home. And you clear off. Let's give these boys a good old dose of bread here. They want bread, they're going to get it. That's a lot of bread. Here you are, guys. I've no idea where any fish are going to come in on that. There's plenty floating for sure. Okay, we're around this side. I've baited three areas. Nothing's happened for a good ten minutes. Except now, oh, one really big fish has just come up, taking a piece of bread. It's not my piece of bread. They're just starting to come on the crust a bit. And I've seen one just just move the water down there, not on the crust, on the sinking stuff. So I think I'm just gonna have to wait it out here. It's nothing like the summer, they're nothing like as aggressive as the summer. But I feel it's worth hanging on. That's a nice fish moved over there. I might pick one good fish off just to finish this session. Now look, there's a big piece of bread down there. In fact, I think that was mine. <laughs> and I've missed him. Another little tip, rather than cast across the wind, the wind's blowing left to right, so rather than casting across the wind, having a big belly in the line, try and cast slightly down to your fish. So you can sort of, you can sort of move up and cast down to it, and you'll find a, you cast a little bit farther or further, but it doesn't it doesn't drag out of position so fast. Because if you get a belly in the line, you can't strike to set the hook properly. But more important, it might drag that oh look at that. It might drag that crust too fast. Now I did see a real good fish move out there. I think I'm just gonna tough it out here and look for one good fish guys. I was hoping to get you one on camera, but it doesn't appear to be any regularity with the... Oh, look at that fish below me. Look at that fish there, boy. I wonder if they will come on this down here. Good tip is to another gap there. So I'm trying to use this as a backdrop. So from the fish's point of view, they hopefully can't see me against the backdrop of these rushes. Mine is over there, but they're very, very haphazard. They're picking up one, they're going. They're not going like in the summer, they go one, two, three, four, like that. They're not doing that. They're actually taking one piece. Look at that fish over there. There he goes, gone. Now, do I cast there? Or do I let mine just drift round? Tempted to cast, as I always am, but I think I'd better let this one just drift round slowly at the same pace as the others. That's on. That's a fish on. That is a fish on, cast well out. No idea on size, but as you can see with the bend on my small rod, all seems to be holding up. A little bit heavy on the drag there. Man, four carp, who'd have thought it? Common, common as much. He swam straight in. Oh, oh. I don't think he's quite as big as the other one. Let's take a look at him. I really wasn't sure I'd be catching anything at all, and here you are, a nice carp. Now, this is interesting, guys, because this one has come up, literally, I'm gonna take a bit of bread out with me and show you. The ducks have moved in on me. Psst. Right in this bush here. I mean, I saw him almost climbing up in that bush. I'm going to put some bread in there, plus the ducks aren't uh, 
gonna bother me there. I just back off and then see. I've had another fish by the way. Well that's the black storm cloud that's coming. I've got about an hour's left fishing I should say. I just see if that one does come up in the bushes and I'll see if I, A I can catch him, B if I can show him to you how close they feed. Yeah, he's moving in there. He's definitely moving in there. Now, do I leave mine out there or do I go in there? Out there, in there. Smith, tell me what to do. Oh God, there's fish moving here now. The duck's gonna be a pain. Okay, let's put this. I'm gonna throw a little bit of bread in there again. Just see if we can't entice them up right there. Ducks have stuffed me on the bread there, so I will see if I can pick a fish off close in there for you. Right, there's one piece left. Two pieces, one in close and one out by the edge of that tree. I'm going to go out there, I'm just beyond. There's two bits of bread there. They're not big carp. He's taking, they're knocking it off. Okay, I'm going to strike to the left if I do get a take. I'm hoping you guys can see it. I would say I'm 10 seconds away from getting a take or not. <laughs> oh, that was epic, 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 guys. Nice fish too. I'm going to take him first time. I've got him. Wow, how fast was that? Bloody hell, I thought it was about two pounds. It's about five. Seven, that is, guys, in case you want to know. Seven carp. And that's a nice fish. How'd you go? How'd you go there? Well, I'm walking slowly and looking. I need to keep the ducks back, but just to see if I can pick up a slightly bigger fish, because earlier on I did see a really, really good fish. I need to use, I haven't got polarizing glasses, so I need to use this dark area. Down here is too glary. That looked like a decent swell. I'll try one out there. I feel a duck coming. I do feel a duck coming. Psh. Psh. Oh. One right by it, right by it, right by it, right by it. Right by it. Can't strike yet, can't strike. Got him. Oh, oh. I'm gonna walk him away from the snags. This one, I'm gonna walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. I just wanna walk him away. Now I can drop him away. I don't know what size is. I didn't really see this one. I felt more of a tweak on the line, you know. Just felt the tape rather than actually actually seeing it. No, it's a little bit smaller. I forgot the lost count. How many I've had now? Seven. I don't know. It took a while for one to come. They are obviously, do you know those, those ducks know I'm playing that fish and they move straight in and eat all my bread. I do love them so much. Oh man, I missed one then. Missed a good fish then. And look at them down here, just down there. I can't put much more bread in because I haven't got a great deal. So if I throw a load in, I get the ducks. So here's my square of bread folks. I go in there, out, twist it, but I just pinch a little bit of white over the black of the hook shank. Dip it once to give me casting weight, and then send it out there to the wild blue yonder. I'm trying to stick the line to the surface upwind rather than have a big belly in it. I need to throw more bread in, but... They are such a pain. Can't right by it, can't right by it. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. No, it's turned off. Very often you get two, and the swirl around the crust, look, see, look. The swirl around the crust is where they try and knock it off the hook, and a second fish will come up and take it. Oh, I've got him. Oh, I've got him, boys. Oh telling you all these tips and that worked like a dream. Just ignore it, don't panic with the first fish. Oh, 
Oh, he's going well on this one. This could be, could be fish of the day. And that looks like the storm of the night. Come on. This rod's holding up. They're gone. That's why I've whipped it all around this bit. Straight up here, cut it off around the bin there. Glued it with arrow dye. Did the best I could. And it seems to be holding up. Let's have a look at this kitty. I think this one's six. This could be, could be fish of the day, this kitty. Oh yes, please. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. This is the one. This is the one, people. He's peeling me. He was peeling me off then. How my battery is, how my battery. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, that looks a, that looks a big fish. I think I've got him, I think I've got him, I think I've got him. Oh yeah. That's me done there, boys. That's close to the magic number. That is very, very close to the magic number. I'm going to have to balance it on the chair there, guys. This one will be about... He's not going to hold still, it's common. He's going to go, he's going to go nuts. I'd say he's about nine pounds. I can show him to you, I will do. Oh. That's a... That's a wiggly one. That is a nice common carp. I see he's very very close to 10 that one. A great fish to catch and just goes to show. One rod, two loaves of bread. In fact I needed one to be honest. They're not taking that uh, slopped up bit on the bottom. All on the surface still in the winter. That one is a nice fish. He's out. Away he goes. Yes. Get him. Well, that was a really good fishing trip, wasn't it? I mean, one rod, two loaves of bread, and I finished 17 car, two into double figures. Well pleased with that. I wish it happened like that every time, but you can get some afternoon and evening sessions where they just come on the bite and they just keep coming and coming. I don't change any rigs, anything. Whatever I've catching fish on, I try and stick with it for that particular day. I only change really rigs and terminal gear when the fish is tough that's when you need to start thinking i've got to start thinking about something else now yeah i need to get in the totally awesome workshop and make some fishing leads maybe you guys could come along with me i'm going to be making some beach leads with grips so it holds out in the sand in the tide and some bigger boat leads in different sizes i love doing it it passes the time i tell you what the best bit is it saves me money so I've moved from the tackle shack into the bomb site. Pallet wood, I wonder what that's for. So, it's so windy that I've got my doors, huge garage, double door, wide open for ventilation. This is lead melting. I've got my snippers here, tin snips. I've got some sheet lead there. I've got my gloves. I've got my breathing mask, which I might or might not wear, but get all the safety stuff, lighter, pliers. I've got some clips there. Over here, I've got all the various molds there for making uh, beach leads if I get round to it, the wire loops, 
the grip lead wires there. I've already got some melted there. I've got it all sheltered as best I can. I'm preheating this on a sort of low, a low heat if you like. And what I do is I just rest that over the top to help shut that heat in. And look, down there, that has, that's melted already, which is good news. So we're gonna have a pour. It's just a regular old aluminum saucepan with a little couple of flanges bashed into it there with a hammer. And we'll see if we can't get a take on these two first. So prudent to put the gloves on. Leather gloves are good. These are my first pour ones are pretty thick. That should be quite hot. This particular mold's graduated so I can move it in and out. There's little mark indentations on there telling me basically what sort of weight I want on there. So if I bring it back, it's gonna make quite a big weight. Gonna go for the first pour. You might or might not see it. Now sometimes, let's get this in there first, boys. There we go, here we go, here we go. Right, the first pour generally, unless that mold is very hot, won't take. I think this one, that's why I preheat them there, you see? That is the idea of it, and that's why you use hot gloves. Here we go again. I can't turn it around. I might be able to do it the other way for you in a minute. Let's get see if we can get that. All the scurf. Now, I was going to say that one hasn't taken properly. That's my guess. Meantime, back over here, put some, some more lead in there to get melted down. There's a good bit there. And I'm going to try a different mould. Don't worry about all this splatter mark, that's the first pour. So I've given that a little bit of time to set there. I've got the other lead, look, just over here. Cut up some fresh flashing. Put that melting down. Take off these spring clamps. This might not be a great one. No, actually tell a lie because I preheated that mould. I've actually got a decent lead there. The scrap stuff goes straight back in the pot. Still warm. This is still warm. This slides up and down in here, giving you whatever graduation you want. So I want something a little bit bigger. I've got to come right to the back. Don't want this to cool down too much. So I get half a dozen leads for this. So I can make those into grip leads. Which is what I'm really after. Some decent heavy up in leads. Now don't forget, this mould is going to be hot, so get a pair of gloves before you actually put your little clip in there. And you can see that's on there, that's going to preheat the mould. Otherwise, your first pour generally into a cold mould, it has to almost heat the mould up and it will be a none taker as we call it. It just won't take in the uh, full pattern like this. It won't take like that, you see. So preheating the mould is my way of doing it. I've got one out. I just got to tidy that up, take the excess lead off. The excess lead obviously goes back, yes, in the boiling pot. In fact, you don't boil it, we melt it. Uh, let's check this one down here and see if we've got a take on that one. There we go. That's a slightly longer one. As you see, it's a much longer one. I'll tidy all that up. And the edges here, the flat parts, are purely because I'm lazy and I haven't cleaned that that outside flange edge off. Probably get a bit of fine sandpaper and if you want a perfect, look it's a fishing weight for goodness sake. It's taking a bait down to the seabed. I'm not launching it to Mars. Clips on. In goes the ring. Just a, just look, you just leave a, leave a little bit of it there. That's all you need. And then this one, I'm gonna put that one actually back on there. Pick him up gently. Wanted to get, get him up to heat. That gives you time while this lead's melting to just have these cool down and take off the surplus here. You can really spin it round, it's just the actual pour point of the uh, mould. There you go, that piece, good piece. You get half a dozen of these and you've actually got another fishing lead. And these ones you can trim up if you want with something like pair of snips, get the worst of it off. I find these work, but you can also tap it with a hammer when you get the surplus off like this, just to get your shape. The rest you can do tapping it, just shaping it with a hammer. Hopefully you can see down there that's just starting to uh, 
to melt if I just move it like you see it moving around if you leave a little bit of lead that's melted in the bottom of the pan you'll find when you put the next piece of unmelted lead in there it seems to melt quicker because it's already hot it's partly melt melted I've got this going I've got it sheltered with my toolbox and hopefully by putting this lid back on just gently like that shuts the heat down I'll get a better melt well boys we've got two already all right gloves on going for the second pour gonna keep this one quite long there now that lot is was heavier this time okay just watch it doesn't spill pour it out nice and steady in a constant speed straight down the filler hole I'll put it back on there because it will get cold there's a second one about the same length I should guess once you get these molds hot you can uh, start processing quite quickly there we go now just let these cool that's why I've got gloves on and these obviously can also get hot on top so just be aware everything is hot you want no moisture at all anywhere near any lead melting look up all the safety we've actually got a full film up on lead melting making different types of weights grip leads everything but just go through all that health and safety stuff breathing masks blah blah blah, blah. it's melting lead this is how i am melting my fishing leads somebody else might do it differently different kind of mold this is a nice good size mold for me for boat fishing that's a sort of what i call a mid-tide range um, so i guess that's probably 10 ounces 11 ounces something like that this one has to put the clip on it like this there we go probably want to clip on the front as well so you can see the gap there that's going to let the the good stuff out i close it up i put a ring in there and it's ready for pouring always treat these as very hot and there you can see people look lovely lovely lead there let's wiggle that off going to trim off this piece trim off that drop it back in and then i'll tap these with a hammer later good job the main pointer is guys keep these molds hot keep using them and they'll stay hot I'll put these here to a side first I'm gonna bring this guy over here it might not have been on there long enough to get a good pour on it but we'll try it we might get lucky just by boosting that heat and heating the mold first that is trust me as sweet a mold as I could get right now time to check this one out see if we've got a, a take on this I'm fairly sure we have and that oh, beautiful that's an absolute beauty mate and of course it, it feels much better when you lose one on the bottom snagged up when you've made your own rather than shop bought ones I just spin those three or four times and then just rock them wiggle away at it and snaps off this goes back in the pot right now you can see I've actually got three molds here because they're all heated up now so I've had a three-way pour out of the one mix as you if you call it a mix the one melt I should say so we got one two and i'm going for the smaller sizes now just by sh shallowing it up there we go three leads from one melt once you get enough in the pan don't put too so much in the sauce but you can't lift it there you go more to sort out process well underway guys five molds five pours let's see what success rate we've got I cracked on quite a bit there once I got those molds hot so here's what I got this is what you can do on a windy rough day I've got my small leads there which are ideal for boat fishing big ones I've got some more of those I've got a nice large lead there I didn't do jumbo leads because I have got some and I've made up the ones I really do need which are different size grip leads like these ones that fold around they're the DCA molds you can get 
So I've got, let's have a look. A few plain long tail bombs here. You know, you can cast a long way with those. I've run out of all the uh, the wires and that now. And these are plain ones. Uh, so they're supposed to fly well through the air. They're not that particularly heavy. They might be a four and a half to five, maybe five ounce with those veins on. But what I do find is when I'm bringing them in like this fast, they hit on uh, boulders and rocks and stuff like that and these bend and buckle over so they're okay over sand they're not so great over um, you know rocks and boulders so you do have to take a pair of pliers and just straighten those out otherwise I think when you cast if one of these veins here is a little bit off kilter it might put a different flight on the lead so you know I've got quite a few there these ones I use all the time and I use them on the boat up tied in as well that's it. that's how they work they just break out like this as you can see you've seen them in our many films as I say we have a full size film up on lead melting but I just thought you know what I've got to do some and I've got 26 leads there that I've knocked up in what a couple of hours after the tackle shack well that was a good little session of lead melting it's given me another load of fishing weights that's right probably to lose Thanks for watching this episode of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, anything else you want. On TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. Just pop over and see if Mike's got any new films up as well. We're still currently trying to pump out two films a week on the Fishing Channel. I might take a break soon. No, I don't know. This weather's been a shocker. Anyway, you've seen me making weights. I'm ready to go. Probably sea fishing in the next one. Who knows? The thing is, I don't even know where I'm going myself from one day to the next. Course, sea, trout, boat, wherever. But, hopefully, fishing. See you guys next time.